All right, Joey, uh, where are you cracking? Oh, well, we have to crack the Bombers today. With uh, like, They almost got out of jail. I think it's fair to say they did get out of jail because the Kangaroos gave them an almighty fright. But it's September dreaming because it keeps the Bombers' finals hopes alive and the chance to win that first final. I haven't kept record of how many days it is, Hutto. But all I do know, it's the first time in 10 years the Bombers have sat in the top six on the ladder in the second half of the season. And they are giving themselves every chance. And it was their leaders late in this game. It was a high-pressure fourth quarter. And we'll talk about the Kangaroos his kids in a minute, but some of their leaders stood up late in this game to get the win for them, to keep their season alive. They did it a few weeks ago against Richmond. They've been able to do it again. Don't underestimate this Kangaroos side now. And it was a gutsy win. It was it was done off the back of defence again late. You know, Ridley and Laverde stood tall. Uh, Zach Merritt, who we'll touch on in a minute, led from the front. But it was a great win for the Bombers. And now they can build massive games Sunday night against Carlton. A Carlton team that are just struggling for all sorts of confidence. If they can win that and go into the bye, sitting inside the top six, absolutely they should be thinking about finals. And winning one? Well, that's the aim. We'll worry about that down the track, Otto. But that's, Thanks, coach. That's the aim. We're taking it one week at a time. But it was a huge win for their season, absolutely. Especially with so many teams breathing down their neck just outside the top eight. All right. Well, the team they beat in the end, I mean, you wouldn't have suspected that the Kangaroos were any chance at the start of the game, wouldn't have the way things were flowing. But uh, from 20 points... Uh, down at quarter time, they actually got 17 points ahead. So I'm really interested in, in what your view of this is, Kingy, and where you're going to take your first crack. Yeah, I'm really excited about about the club and where they're at and the young kids that are there. And Joey's got some, some great vision for later on to, to chat about the future. But the future is going to lose some magnets along the way. And you perform yourself on the journey or you perform yourself out of the journey. And, and these older guys have to be the reason you win games, not part of the reason you lose them. So we're talking about guys... That are, that are seasoned campaigners. Now, Stevenson here, that's a poor kick from Hipple. That's a chance for the Kangaroos to score and put a seven-point margin on the game. Now, Mackay's going to a three-on-one, or three-on-two, for the youngest players in the, in the team, in the lineup. Get it to your Ruckman, get it to your tools. You give up an opportunity, they go back inside and score. It, it's just basic play. And then Jack Zeeble, he had a horror last quarter. He kicked two out in the full. He, he just looked, he looked rattled. He, it was... It was like the older blokes froze. Aaron Hall, I mean, he's, to me, he's not in shape to play AFL footy at the elite level right now. It, and he looked out of sorts today. That was a big fumble. There was a big one-on-one -on -one with about two minutes to go on the wing. He paddled the ball. He didn't have the confidence to take it one grab. Um, so I just think you've got to look at this. You've got to look at the older guys. And maybe it's time to turn the page on, the, on a few. And that may sound harsh, but this next level of player are ready to take control of the footy club. Why wait? The time is now to say, hey, Wardlaw, I know you played four, three games, four games. Sheasel, Phillips was terrific today. Mm. Now, Simpkin got taken out of the game. They've got enough mm. young talent to, to really get rolling. It, it's time to make some decisions. Oh, I agree, because they weren't in this game because of their veterans. I, I know they had the plan to play them. They bought in Shields and, and Tucker and, and Greenwood's been getting a game and they've still got Zeeble and they've brought Hall back in. But they were in this game late because of their kids. I mean, yeah. if anyone wants to go back and watch George Wardlaw in that last quarter, he was he was trying to get that team over the line. Will Phillips, again, put together another excellent game. He was going to work late in the game. Taron Thomas showed why he's going to be a, a, a really good player. So I think they do need to put more faith in those kids and, and keep blooding them. Because I think, and I'm still bullish on North Melbourne, when it all clicks for them, it'll come in a hurry. I don't think right. they are yep. that far away at all. Another 20 or 30 games together with the majority of this group, the forward line that's working as it is with Larky, Zerha, Coleman Jones and Combin, oh, I think it can click pretty quick. So keep showing more faith. Remember, Greenwood was knocked out late in that third yes. quarter. Simpkin, Simpkin out of the game, well, yeah. no LDU. So it was the kids that dominated the clearances after quarter time and gave them a chance to win. It was a massive effort. So there, there is a little, yeah, there is some experience still there, isn't there, who can, who can still lead the way. Yeah, you know, you've read like like the mall. Yeah, and absolutely, so. there's enough. Uh, so they've got to perform. Yeah, so when yeah. you look at this first quarter, right, let's go back to setting the game up, yeah. Joe. And the Bombers were terrific with their structural play at stoppages in, in the first early part. And you talked about this upstairs. They set the game up, Essendon, in the first quarter with how they organised the round structure. I mean, they had won the clearances 16 to 9 and kicked five goals to one from stoppage. And this is why the game was over, really, because the Kangaroos, from this point on, were able to win clearance and dominate. But look at the ability here from Essendon to spread. And look at look Hall and some senior players, Greenwood there, just sort of trotting around, not really influencing the play in the inner bubble, and then weren't able to spread with their Essendon players on the outside. So this was a big issue for North Melbourne. Credit to the Bombers. They came out firing. I mean, Zach Merritt again, 16 disposals, five clearances and two goals in the first quarter. He was phenomenal. He's now had three BOGs in three weeks, Hutto. Here he is getting involved. The centre clearances were dominant as well for Essendon. So North Melbourne were on the back foot right from the start of this game. They did such a great job 
to get back in it. But led by this man, their skipper, uh, that set up the win. Yeah, it certainly did. And uh, for Brad Scott, the, the Bombers have now, as you said, moved up in the sixth place ahead of the Western Bulldogs. Let's hear his thoughts post-match. I don't know what people think, but we're a fair bit younger than North Melbourne today. Um, they're just the facts. I'm not making it up. Um, and when you're a young side and momentum goes against you, it's hard to push back against that. And, you know, we've, we've on a couple of occasions this year, we've been able to, to push back against it. You know, even the Geelong game, when they really jumped us early, you know, the, the, um, the ability just to dig in and, and keep fighting has been really impressive. Agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, some of the younger players, Nick Martin again, was, <laughs> he's locking in a spot on the wing in the All-Australian team. Cole Langford continues to deliver. Amazing, he just gets the job done. As I said, Ridley back to his best, the 10 intercept. So, and as Brad Scott said, they are still a very young side. It sneaks under the radar how young this Bombers side is. They are still building for the future, but they can play finals absolutely this year.